Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie, and in this video I'm going to take a look at where I think it's best to spend your money. What is your next big purchase? Is it an airbrush? Or is it a 3D printer? Me, I'm all for the 3D printers. And with me coming over to see Oliver, luckily <laughs> he had one of these just stowed away on a shelf that's probably been there for about six months. So I think that's the main reason he invited me over really, just to set them up and <laughs> get them running so he doesn't have to. Now the models that I'm going to be printing are some from Asgard Rising, There's some lovely goblins and squig riders which we're going to be using for Warcry. With them being pre-supported I just threw them in chair two and now we're done. In the meantime I am downstairs in the brand new broadsword wargaming shop checking out miniatures to see what I can make into a Warcry warband. I find this bad boy lurking around in the back of the woods, it's a Sylvanas Stark collecting box. This is a great core for a Sylvanas warband. You get to use the branch rich four dryads, although you can't use a tree lord. So I added in three Kurnoth hunters. Have you got yours already? Done and dusted, my friend. As if you pre-planned it. I bet you ordered it in especially. If you want to order your own Sylvanas, available at brawlsawwargaming.com. Chill. Yes, no, I didn't at all. How long have I got? What are you doing? Uh, well, I've just finished slicing. I've got two and a half hours. Two and a half hours to build like I've 12 I've got to build them because this company, for some reason, has been doing multi-part, which is annoying. So three hours <laughs> to build these models before you do, and then we both start painting. Yeah. I can do it. I can beat you. You're slow, though. I am slow, but I'm probably going to be I'm quicker than you. I'm going to get these set off. Airbrush for the win! <laughs> I don't know why I'm rushing. This is the only job I've got to do for like three hours. I waste no time in getting to the assembly. Now, I am one to faff and I do hate mold lines with a passion. So unfortunately, this does slow me down quite a lot. But I want to make sure I have the best looking models possible. Um, Some time in, I have the four dryads and the branch which assembled. Phew. But then, disaster strikes. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, there it is. Easy. So do I need to 3D print you some bases then? Yeah. Is this because you've not got any bases for your models? I've lost my bases somewhere and this is one of the bonuses of assembling your own models is you lose things. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, if you 3D print me some bases, I will give you three minutes on the airbrush. Because that's worth it. There, right for you. It's just a copy at GW Bases. <laughs> now the reason I offered to 3D print these to Oliver was to prove a point. And the point was, in the time it took him to look for them and give up, I'd actually slice them and set them off on the printer. See, this is the benefit of 3D printing. You can help your mates out when they're in need. While I was doing all this, my models had nearly finished and Oliver, he's still sticking stuff together. Right, mate, so mine have just finished. You've just finished? Yeah. I've got like maybe five minutes to go. Well, mine, uh, I just need to wash and then get them stuck together. We're going we're gonna to be finished at the same time. I don't care, don't distract me. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hot water, front kettle. Making a brew? No, making a resin brew. Ow. Tip, don't put your fingers in. <sighs> you haven't stuck on my bases yet. Oh shit. And I've got one bit here to go. You've, oh. got, you've got to cure them and all. You didn't, you didn't do it for me? No, because I haven't killed mine yet. Oh, you bastard. Giving your viewers some good tips here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because my models are wet through, they're not going to dry rate right quick. It's going to take them about 45 minutes to dry in this temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash them in alcohol to, to dilute the water, and then the alcohol evaporates really quickly. There you go, viewers. Tips you can't get anywhere else. Nope. Particularly not on Luke's Geek Gaming channel. So don't bother watching it. <laughs> Stay here, don't leave. I know you're thinking about pressing the skip next video button, but don't. What are you doing, Oliver? Not 3D printing. I'm not 3D printing green bases. <laughs> you just cure them? No, I'm airbrushing. All oh, right. I'm airbrushing. <laughs> airbrush them green, look. <laughs> See? All right, so I'll put these on the UV cure. Remember, guys, don't over cure. You want to keep some of that flex. You want to keep it just right. A minute's more than enough. Finally, enough of the 3D printing garbage. It's time for the airbrush to shine. This is an Iwata HPC airbrush. 
It is an expensive piece of kit sent to me by the guys at the airbrush company. So to keep it fair, I would really be using the Sparmax Max 4. They are both similar in value to each other, the 3D printer and the Sparmax being at around 200 pound. Unfortunately, Kira dropped the Sparmax off a table onto a tile floor and smashed it. She then proceeded to use this airbrush, didn't clean it, and I've spent half an hour cleaning it. But I'm sure Luke took no advantage here, decided to do nothing, just stayed around, played fair, uh, didn't spray anything or assemble any miniatures. So I stuck my three models on the uh, paint stick and then the test prints. I'm, I'm honestly not cheating. And we're off. This is the Vallejo base primer in black. Just getting this into the recesses, giving myself a nice smooth coat. Now I used bone as a base coat and I wanted to zenithal with a white or a very pale cream. And I thought I'd have a look in Oliver's shop. And while I was thinking about buying the white can, I remembered something. I've got some airbrush time. Oliver, yeah. Can I uh, borrow your my three minutes airbrush allowance to uh, Zenith all these? Are you, are you, where's those come from? I set your printers up, didn't I? Right. So when I set them up, I have to do test prints. Yeah. So I did some test prints. So you blue peated it? Yeah. You've gone full blue peter. Yeah. There's no, there's no way I could have printed them in three hours. What? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've, we, we've, we were at the same point at the same time. Yep. We've literally come to the same bit. Yep. And you're wanting three minutes off me now. Three minutes just so I can Zenithal prime these. And then he gave me the worst possible airbrush ever. It's one of them hand compressor things. And it's, yeah, don't buy one, it's horrible. <laughs> and with that final splash of white from above, both warbands have a Zenithal highlight. It took us around three and a half hours from start to finish to get everything to this point. So far, 3D printer versus airbrush is neck and neck. Although he didn't have to do anything for those several hours whilst I was assembling models. So to keep up with you, I think I'm going to um, use contrast paint. The painter's best friend. Yes, because you're painting trees more or less. Uh, I've got one more model than you, but trees, wood, airbrush. Should, would be good. Yes. Should, would have, could have. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you've got your specs on. Yep. You've got your paintbrush ready to rock. I've got the airbrush ready to roll. Yep. Let's get the let's get, cameras rolling. Let, yeah, yeah, let's get, more, get these painted. More B-roll. <laughs> First off, I hit all of the models with dryad bark. This is the great base color for wood because it's dryads, dryad bark. With my eyesight being quite bad, I thought I'll go with bright contrast paints and just slop them on and hope for the best because I'm not painting any intricate details today. Next up is a quick splash of Gawthor Brown. This is the highlight for the Dryad Bark. It is the colour this suggests and I think it looks great. I didn't want to go too green so I went with the Plague Berry contrast paint. To add a bit more contrast, depth and definition, I'm spraying Black Templar's contrast paint into the lower sections and recesses. Because Oliver's basically painting twigs, I thought it were best to use complementary colours, so green, yellow, purple, red, and just literally slop it on there and tie it all together with a, a brown wash. Right, so I've got my first base coat with some washers on and finished. Got to let them dry, and then I've got, what, 20 minutes, 45 minutes maybe of highlighting with some colour, brushing on normal colours to bring the colours back up. Mm -hmm. Or I could go ultra speed painter and do the final cream glaze, a dry brush. A dry brush is the final cream glaze. Try saying that three times. <laughs> I'm a, I'm at pretty much the same position you are. I'm just dobbing on a, three more models to go, putting a bit of green in those recesses. So both warbands are really starting to come together now. Mine have lots of greys, browns, blacks, whites, and greens, whilst Luke's really colourful, really full of contrast, and really nice. It's onto the massive stage, the dry brushing. I don't go heavy here, although this is wood, so I don't mind a bit of texture. Whilst Luke, with these amazing looking squig models, just adds a bit more to the models and makes the yellows pop by giving them a light dry brush over the top. It's then the race to the end, the final finish, Yes, the time lapse. Just to finish everything off, we are both now going through details, painting up some greens. I think Luke is now just highlighting some of his models. I've finished. You're just done? Oh yeah. my, you are. Based, everything completed. Well, amazing. I am on my last step of airbrush, just the weapons now. I rimmed them. <laughs> I've painted the rims of my models and I just have to do the basing afterwards as well. So I'm probably like 
10 minutes behind you now. Yep, and then we've got a basin. And I'll base mine then. Now, I don't claim to be a particularly good painter, but this is where the airbrush really comes into its own. If you want little OSL type effects or some sort of smooth transition on something, it's just perfect. Adding some blue onto these weapons and then building them up to white is a really good way to give you an ethereal magic effect. Speaking of magic, it's on to the fast dry basin glue by Geek Gaming Scenics. This is Luke's own product. He has sat right next to you whilst I'm doing this. So what easier way to learn than from the master? Cover the base in the PVA glue, then grab a base ready. I am going to use base ready patchy planes as it has a nice bit of brown, but also some green in there to sort of help balance the base out. I don't want this to take away from the model, but I do want it to look nice. So I'm going to use some tufts. I've got daffodils, autumns and heather. There are of course lots of other colours all available from the Broadsword Wargaming shop down below. These are just a really nice way to finish off or unify your armies or models. They come with a sticky side, you push them down, stick them on and they stay. It's as simple as that. And there you have it, that is two Warcry Warbands done in a day. Two very different techniques from very different painters with very different models. What do you think? Let's sum up and we'll catch you back at the end. So that was a lot of fun. I got, I actually finished about an hour before you. Probably, yeah, you got yours based in that. Yeah. Uh, then I finished mine off with the airbrush. I wasn't gonna do these, but I thought, sod it, that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? And these yeah. models do lend themselves to an airbrush. That's kind of what they're made for, like yeah. these swords and stuff. Could I do that with a paintbrush? Probably not, probably not as smooth as that. I couldn't. 3D printer or airbrush, what would you get? 3D printer for me, you can print some interesting models that you can't buy in shops. But at the same time, I do like using airbrushes. Right. Um, so I'd say both. For me, it, it probably would be an airbrush. 3D printers are easier to use than you think, but as is the airbrush. But would I get that done personally? No. Can I do a whole army? I think the trick, the trick with the airbrush is not just do one model, it's do loads. Yep. Get them all done and in stages, don't change colour too often. 3D printing's quick now, especially with these little printers. This simple, it, yeah. even I can do it. So yeah, ultimately it's up to you to decide what you want to do. For me, the airbrush is a great painting tool. That is what I would go for. And the 3D printer lets you pick up interesting things. The end of this video is the both great tools, save up for both. Buy them both. Within the affiliate link below. Yeah. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's a Patreon down there as well. And the shop Brawls of Wargaming, where we got all these wonderful basic materials from, um, which are made by you. Yep. So if you're in the EU, go there. If not, go to geekgaming.com. Mm -hmm and support him because he needs it because your lass is going full time. She is, she's going full time in the shop. Woo, it's sort of scary, but it's gonna be good. But thank you for coming down and helping out. It's been amazing. You're over here in Ireland. Yeah. First time we've seen each other in a while and we've Two done years. this. Done this and got very, very drunk. Yeah, he's still, <laughs> he's still recovering. <laughs> but thanks a lot, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Love, love, love. <laughs>